acknowledge you even though you're watching this after the fact we still love you the same welcome to stay home university man we are loving doing this we've been uh bringing you guys for three weeks now valuable content to help you navigate everything in the world as it stands today and uh we're gonna keep the streak going today because we need to know what should we be doing what should our mindset be what should our actions be with handling our money right now because the world is full of question marks we don't know when this will all subside and we have to be smart not then but right now with every single dollar that comes our way and so we have a very special guest instructor today but before we introduce our guest instructor we want to encourage you as you come into the class today make yourself known say hello let us know who you are and where you are from because we want to know who is here inside stay home university for this class that's right and when you come in make sure you hit that share button um this is gonna be a good class i'm super super pumped. oh man well, i'm geeked I'm super all right pumped. All right, so let, let's let's peel back the curtain a little bit. Today's special guest instructor at Stay Home University is none other than Dr. Lynn Richardson. She is a celebrity financial coach, not just a financial <laughs> coach like us, yeah. but a celebrity <laughs> financial coach. And she is here with us to help us understand, learn how to keep more of our money in our pocket right now. Dr. Lynn, welcome, welcome. to Stay Home University. Hello, welcome. Can you hear me? You we sound can. great. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. So I know I'm a grandmother's child. I know I'm a wife, a mother. Uh, my clients call me the minister, preacher, gangster, teacher. Uh, but the celebrity thing is like, I'm, I'm a celebrity? Okay. <laughs> That's right. right. I mean, you've been doing this for 20 years or so. I mean, you're on the Steve Harvey show. You're working with Russell Simmons. I mean, oh. the list just goes on and on. So yeah, I would say so, yeah. Dr. Lynn. It's time to embrace it. <laughs> Wow. You know what? If it means that I have to serve the people and, and the truth is out of everything I have done in my life, accepting this public position has been the most difficult. Yeah. Um, as much as I talk, interestingly, interestingly enough, I'm actually shy. <laughs> people are like, oh, we don't believe that. Yeah. If I go into a room full of people, I'll kind of sit to myself, that kind of thing. But I, I really enjoyed being behind the scenes, helping people. And um, it was it was a struggle for me to say, OK, I'm going to go out and be in public and have to smile and say hello <laughs> and doing all of those things. But God is good. And I'm excited about this season. I mean, this season right now that we're in looks bleak to people, but it, it's actually a great opportunity. So I'm happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to be talking about that because that was one of the purposes of why we started Stay Home You. Um, to actually show hope in the midst of this chaos and even though it looks like everything is really turning for the worse there can be still some good out of it and you can still be excited about certain things of course we're not taking away from those who have lost their lives and people some who have been impacted exactly but there are uh, other opportunities that you will be sharing with us on today on how all of us need to get certain finances in order and what we should be doing right now so dr lynn i mean we're big fans um some people one of our gifts is introducing important voices to um, areas of the population that maybe they haven't heard from as of yet so if someone's tuned in right now to the class and being introduced to you for the very first time could you just let them know who you are and what you're all about uh, absolutely. Uh, as I shared, I was I'm a grandmother's child. I was born and raised in Chicago. My grandmother was 75 years old, still cleaning homes for wealthy people, putting me through college. Um, we, I grew up in the project, so I knew we weren't rich, but I didn't feel poor. You know what I mean? I mean, if I needed food, I never remember going to bed hungry or anything like that. And if I needed money for a field trip, I'd ask my grandmother for money and she'd tell me to go look in the room on top of the shelf, behind the box, behind the pillow, inside my pocketbook inside the zipper wrapped up in a piece of paper towel is twenty dollars like it would be fifteen thousand plates you know like how did you remember all that so i'd get the money do what i had to do so 
I get off to college because my grandmother, you know, she she wanted me to be successful and always supported me like our grandmothers and big mamas do. So she taught me to go to school, get a good education, get a good job, go to church on Sunday, wear clean underwear in case you get hit by a bus. You know, they got to tell you about the clean underwear. Uh, so I get off to college and I knew all of those, you know, common sense things, but I knew nothing about money. So my first week in college, I got a bunch of credit cards. Uh, you were supposed to walk around and pick one. How about I got one of each? Uh, that didn't go over well. I was at very, very expensive Northwestern University and I was there on scholarships. So I didn't have any money. So when the creditors will call and say, Lynn, can you borrow the money? I'd say, can I borrow it from you? I had all kind of funny answers, but my funny answers were no longer funny when I got out into the real world. Uh, my credit was jacked up. I had to get my furniture from Renner Center. Um, so I knew I entered this world really kind of devastated because it wasn't what I thought being an adult would be like. And I, I had no clue at that time that I was the problem. Uh, fast forward a couple years later, I'm married, three children, big house in the suburbs, you know, all of that. I'm successful. I'm a radio show host in Chicago. I'm helping a lot of people. I helped a lady with four bankruptcies and two foreclosures overcome her credit issues. She got into a house with a 3% interest rate, 3 or 4% interest rate, $1,400 down, became known as the mortgage guru, helping people all over the country and making a lot of money. But I was living a lie. I was living check to Monday. You see, check to check is a blessing. That means you get paid on Friday and by the next payday, you're broke. But check to Monday is a whole nother game. You get paid on Friday, you kick it on the weekend, you pay on your past due bills. And by Monday, you're broke. And I was living that lifestyle making 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a month. I said a month, not a year. So no matter how much money I w made, I found a way to be broke. So I spend my life helping people understand this. More money doesn't solve a money problem. If it did, millionaires wouldn't go bankrupt. If more money could solve a money problem, you'd never have a bankrupt millionaire. You'd never have a bankrupt billionaire. So if more money doesn't solve the problem, and I know people who are you know, struggling at any given point in time, particularly in these times that we're in right now, you're thinking, no, that's crazy. If I had $50,000, no. Everybody with the wrong money mindset will get that money and will do something out of order with it and it'll be gone. And, and you know, and I just I ask people, I say, let me prove it to you. Have you ever gotten a raise on your job? Everybody raise their hand. OK, when you got your raise, did you raise your expenses? Yes. And then so you let me tell you. And then have you ever prayed for God to get you out of a situation and you get out of it? You say, I'll never do this again. You get out of the situation. And what happens? You find yourself right back in the same situation. So it's so appropriate that this is um this is, the, the, I mean, basically you are homeschooling people on life, <laughs> right? <laughs> you are homeschooling people on life. So it's so appropriate that we are doing this because most people have to go back to financial kindergarten. You know, we, every one of us has a, pa a test to pass. What do you do when you have more than enough money? And what do you do when you don't have enough money? So when you have more than enough money, do you spend it crazy? Do you spend without a plan like I did? Um, do you, you know, see, I didn't even believe in budgets. Let me tell you, I was running corporate, I was running divisions for major corporations, the number one financial institution in the country, in the world. And I was managing their budget, but I was not managing mine. And so what I help people to understand is we all have to have some basic uh, education. And I came to learn very recently, uh, listening to a Robert Kiyosaki video that, you know, two gentlemen, very well known, uh, big, you know, names, the Rockefeller and so on and so forth, back in the early 1900s, took education out of the school system. Because I believe that uh, financial education, you know, when children go to school, they need reading, writing, arithmetic, God and taxes. Th those are the six things. Th that's what they need. What I say, five things. Everything else, I don't need to know no so photosynthesis unless I'm going to be a flower person, or, you know, I, and I'm no disrespect, but I don't need that. What I need is those five things. So it's OK for us to go back to financial kindergarten. And so no matter who you are, no matter where you are, and there are a lot of different philosophies about how to get your money straight. All of them fall under these three categories. Number one, you must spend less money, period. You got to spend less money. There's no way to get around that. Got to spend less money. So I tell people to live by the 10, 10, 30, 50. The first 10% you tithe, 
Uh, I started tithing when I was broke. I had a big old fat corporate check, but my uh, check stopped up here. My bills kept going all the way down. So I started tithing when I was broke because I realized I was broke whether I tithed or not. It wasn't like if I kept the tithe money, I was straight. I was broke either way. So I started tithing. So at least I can have God on my broke side when I pray. You understand? How you going to be going up to God? And you have to, it's like you get home from school, you didn't do your homework, but you want to go outside. Uh, no, 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 no. Your mama going to get a switch and whip your butt. You better get in there and do your homework. So I came to the table with something. Number two, the next 10%, you save. And not just for a rainy, not for an emergency. Grandma B taught me to save for an emergency or a rainy day or if something breaks down. But we got to save for a come up. You see, this is the season right now for a come up. Stock prices are low. Now you can come up. Real estate prices are going to go lower. You can come up. Getting your home-based business or whatever it is you have in order, you want to be able to capitalize off of a come up. The next 30% is cash in your pocket. And I say this is um, for all your spending money, your jujus, hair, nails, grocery, gas. If it doesn't fit, get rid of it. And it has to be cash because some people have a spending addiction. And if you're confused, a spending addiction is what you have when you go to the grocery store for toothpaste and walk out with $179.47 worth of stuff you don't need. Talking about it's on a rollback rack. That was not on sale for you. <laughs> that wasn't on sale for you. That's only on, if it's not free, it's not on sale for you. How people start talking about I'm getting this because it's on sale. That's not on sale for you. You can't afford it. You cannot afford it. So. I was living this lifestyle. I had $100 cash. I went to the cash register. You know I had $200 worth of stuff. What would I have done if I started, if I had a credit card, a debit card, or a check? I wouldn't have even thought about it. I would have just... I would have just did, I would have did what I had to do. Why? Because I wouldn't have been, I didn't want to be ashamed or two, because I have too much pride or three, because I just don't care. And neither of those is a good strategy for money. So because I was living this and I had $100 cash, I had to start putting stuff back. And you know, at some point people start getting irritated and at first you embarrassed and then I start getting irritated too. So, you know, but you stop that by having cash and you have to understand the whole world wants you to spend without thinking. I run companies for celebrities. I run, I get to be in rooms where people are planning and branding. And I'm not talking about anybody that I've uh, worked with, but companies and people are always trying to figure out something to make that you can buy, like a video game system. You know, the last video game system I bought, it was Sega Genesis in 1999. Everybody who knows me knows that that's the last one that I bought. And to my children's dismay. But here's what I say. Atari 5200 that came out in 1982 was really all we needed. It was in color. You had a joystick. You could play Miss Pac-Man, Millipede, Centipede, Donkey Kong. You could play all that. Now they're coming up with a new game every five minutes. Do you understand they're coming up with a new game? Just so you can spend some money. It only cost them 10 cents to make and they're going to charge you $300 and you're going to stand in line on Black Friday to get it. So that's what... The world is counting on us to buy deals at the stake, which are items that we cannot even burn. If, if we burn them on a the stake, they're not even worth the ashes. We could burn them, too. For example, $5,000 rims on a $500 car, uh, uh, shoes, uh, $200 shoes for feet with corns on them. You need some flip flops instead uh, and some Dr. Show. You know, it's stuff that we're buying. And, and this is what I tell my sisters watching this recession. There has never been a recession that forced a purse company out of business. Never. Not Gucci, Louis, Prada, Chanel, nothing. So from this day forward, we should live by the universal purse test, which says this. If the purse costs more than the amount of money you can keep in it on a regular basis, <laughs> regular basis, leave it on the rack. So you go to the rack and you see a $200 purse, you say, do you have $200 usually? No. $20 purse. That's how much you got. That's the purse you get off the rollback rack. So the whole idea is for us to start to spend our money on assets. So the first 10% you tie, the next 10% you save, 30% is cash in your pocket. The remaining 50% stays in your checking account for your bills. And if you don't have enough money, you must subtract because everybody, nobody has a money problem. Let me repeat. Nobody has a money problem. Everybody who has a money problem has a math problem. And it's one plus one equals two. And if your stuff adds up to 10, you got two dollars, but your stuff add up to 10. You got to subtract <laughs> and you got to get down to under your number. 
And that means you have to do whatever you have to do. So right now, during this particular time, you got to get all your creditors. You got to line them up, put them on a sheet of paper, get you an Excel spreadsheet, then take everything that you owe, write it down, and then uh, the due date. And then the total balance due, because your, your payment due now could be different than your total balance. You got to call each creditor, every last one of them. Tell them you've been impacted by the pandemic or whatever and get an arrangement. Get it in get it uh, in writing. Ask them to email and mail the arrangement. Ask for the operator's name, all of their contact information. Write the start time that you start the call and the end time that you finish the call. Ask them to put the agreement in your notes. And then before you get off the call, ask them to repeat what's in your notes back to you so that everybody's on the same page. So, again, it's a math problem. So wherever you are right now, if you're still working, making money, great. If you're not, then get to writing. It's a, You have to have a strategy. So if you don't have enough money, you've got to figure out how to subtract and get to where you are. And then if you have more than enough money, because see, this is the problem. You have more than enough money. That's not a license to go spend. I am a so-called celebrity. Do you know I have a 2005 Mercedes? That's my car. I got it in 2010. It was a 2005. I bought it for half the price of the new cars. They looked exactly the same. It only had 50,000 miles. That were It was pre-driven, pre-certified. It still had a warranty. Today, because I rarely drive, it only has 112,000 miles. 112,000 miles. The car can last 200,000 more miles. I guess I'm going to have a car until 2050. I don't know. But I'm not buying another one. For who? For what? To impress who? Why? Rich people stay rich because they act poor and poor people stay poor because they act rich. And poor people stay poor acting rich in front of other poor people, which is real crazy. It's crazy. It, it doesn't make any sense. So that's the first piece to spend less money. I'm sorry, I went into a long... Oh, my Ladies and gentlemen, God. Dr. Lynn, Lynn Richards. Yes, have you guys shared this? Come in and share. If you haven't tagged two friends, you are being stingy right now. And if y'all thought that she has been dropping gems right now, just wait till we get even go even further. We're going to be talking about home-based businesses and why you recommend everyone should have one, no matter what. So come in, yes. share this. You want everyone to hear what she has to say. She will be answering a few questions towards the end, so keep your questions as well. So, Dr. Yes. Lynn, let's do that because I did hear you say, and, and it stood out to me because I'm a, I'm a word person, right? So, I was listening and you said, not everybody should have a home-based business. You said, everybody must, must have a home-based business. Help us understand because a lot of people think should, it would be a good idea, but you're saying it's a must. It's a requirement. So so number one is to spend less money. Every financial strategy rule that everybody has falls under these three categories. Spend less money, which I just talked about. Number two is get more money. <laughs> you got to get more money. You have to get more money from uh, passive income streams of 401k retirement uh, if you buy a franchise. But the number one way to get more money is to start a home based business right there uh, where you are. And let me tell you right now, uh, a home-based business is not an option. Who think who think it's an option? Right now, when everybody's at home, you got to be kidding me. A home-based business is not an option. But the, the biggest reason why a home-based business makes sense is because when you have a business, the government loves businesses, you get access to over 475 tax deductions. So you get your money back. So number one, you have to spend less money. Number two, you have to get more money. And number three, you have to get your money back. And it's number three that most people have no clue about. So because I have a home-based business, when I drive my car, it's a tax write-off. When I uh, uh, talk on my cell phone, that's a tax write-off. When I travel, that's a, I don't go, anything I do is business. Everything I do is business. I don't do anything for personal reasons. It's all business. So my children, they don't get Christmas toys. Uh, they don't get birthday presents, graduation presents, none of that. Why? Because I can't get my money back. But if I hire my kids to work in my home-based business, the IRS says you can pay each child up to $12,400 a year. That's a tax write-off to you on Schedule C of your 1040 tax return. 
You pay them. It's tax free to them. It's tax free money to them because a child working for a parent in a home based business. The first twelve thousand four hundred dollars is tax free. Now, people are thinking, well, I don't have twelve thousand four hundred. Whatever you were buying. Everybody with children at home right now spending money because they eat all day. They want to eat all day. They go to school. They only get one snack and a meal and they fine. And they come home. They want to eat every 20 seconds. In the I know because I got three children. And they, when they would come home from school in the summer, I'd be like, wait, what's going on? Why You just came out the refrigerator. What is happening around here? <laughs> what is going on? So you're spending money on food, more food. You're spending money. Uh, you know, it's so funny because my kids used to want to take a lunch to school. And I'm like, uh, I pay two dollars for your lunch at school. But if you fix a lunch here at home, the bread, the meat, all this stuff you got in your lunch, that's about a twelve dollar lunch. You know, so I'm joking. But the point is, I hired my youngest daughter is 18. So I hired her when she was six and all her sisters. So I had a six year old, seven year old and a 12 year old all working for my home based business. So I would pay pay them. And they did things. They helped me at events. They did all that kind of stuff. I actually paid them, hired them, did all of that. And so now the money that I pay them, they use for all the things that I was going to pay for anyway. The difference is I get it back at tax time. So have anybody ever figured out why Warren Buffett pays less taxes than the secretary? Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man, got a hundred sixty billion dollar tax refund. Our president, why you'll never see his tax return, not because it's illegal, but because it's probably a blueprint for how to write everything off. So everybody must have a home-based business. Since the beginning of time, people had home-based businesses. The virtuous woman of Proverbs had nine jobs. All of them were home-based businesses. Everybody has to have a home-based business. So people say, well, I already have a business. That's fine. Keep your corporation over there. You might have a build on a storefront, but there are some tax deductions that you can only get if you have a home-based business. So a home-based business is just, like it, I feel like Noah, one of my colleagues, Ingrid, she said, you know, I feel like Noah. I felt like Jeremiah, actually, because Jeremiah was a little more radical. You know, they put him in the ground. That's me. They go. I, I, every time I go somewhere, I'm telling people, listen, 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 listen. And you get so passionate about it. But look where we are now. Look where we are now. Had everybody who heard me speak. Over the past three years, while I've been on the road and on Steve Harvey had everybody simply done it, we there would be no need for stimulus right now. People would have a home-based business. People would know what to do. People would be able to, and every, do you understand that these, eco, so let me tell you how the government favors businesses. Individuals get a, a stimulus check of a, a thousand dollars, husband and wife, 2000, and then maybe 500 more for your kids or whatever. And then it goes down from there, the higher your income gets. And the stimulus checks will start, I think this week or next week. And the last stimulus check, stimulus checks will be sent out September 11th. I'm not lying to you. It's the truth. It's crazy. It's all, crazy as I'll get out. But businesses, let me tell you what business, a home-based business, independent contractors, freelance workers, people who are running their business like a business, and have financial statements to show it, $10,000 grant, because they want you to stay in business, because businesses are the engine of any economy without businesses. Why? Because business owners, people like you, are always creating and making opportunities. Employees receive. Employees do work. Keep your job. That's fine. But you should also have a home-based business. So it just makes it makes dollars and cents to have a home-based business, and it's, it's not an option. When I look at somebody, anybody, I don't care who they are. I don't care how much money they make. If you don't have a home-based business, you're missing. You're leaving a lot of money on the table. So um, how to start a home-based business, they can register for that. People can register for that with you. Um, we can get the – I think there's a link that, that's up there that uh, uh, my office supplied. Um there are people who want to apply for the grants, but they don't have any financial statements. They don't even know what financial statements are. You can't walk in with your bank statements. You have to have a P&L, profit and loss statement. You have to have a balance sheet. You have to you want to be able to see your projections, your cost of goods sold. That was on the grant application. What is your cost of goods sold? People don't even know what it is. So the other part of this is not not only should everybody have a home based business and there's a class that you can take with uh, the university in order to get that. But if you have a business and you don't have any financial statements, you also still need to go back and take the class. So 
it's um this is a great time. Home-based businesses are thriving. Everybody who has figured out a way to digitize and or expand their home-based business is winning. And so now is the season for that. So good. So good. Ooh, it's like, okay, where do I start? So just as um, a, a, a midpoint here, as Dr. Lynn mentioned, she has a school full of products including how to start a home based business. And they business. are very reasonable. Very reasonable. Let, I'm like, let me tell you, it's, it's free. I was like, wow. It's free. Yeah. Basically, people owe me money. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Do you understand me? So let, let's just talk about like the coaching, $49. That means you get a one-on-one -on -one with me, you get classes, you get online training, and you get two books. That's a no-brainer. The books are $29, $20 each. So no I'm, get, I'm coaching you for $9 is free. And and here's, I used to do it for free, for real, but people didn't value the exchange. Course, right. and, and really I was outside of exchange because the world is not free. And I was not teaching the proper lesson. If you have a business, then exchange needs to happen. And that happens in the form of cash. But yes, everything there is reasonable. Um, we did the business finance one-on-one -on -one, and I encourage everybody, even if you have a CPA who is preparing your financial statements for you, that business finance one-on-one, -on -one, you're actually going to prepare your own financial statements. Because the problem right now is people are trying to apply for the stimulus. So they're giving individuals a thousand. They're giving businesses up to 10 million. They're giving you a $10,000 grant that you don't have to repay if you apply and you have your documentation until the money runs out and then they'll give you a 25,000 bridge loan just to keep you afloat, but you got to have financial statements. So in that business finance one-on-one -on -one class, you pay $49 and you actually will sit there, learn how to do your own financial statements with your own stuff right there. And then you'll be done. And that's being taught by our, she's a controller. You know what a controller mm -hmm. is? Yeah. <laughs> a wow. controller is somebody who manages billions of dollars. The only only individual human that I've ever known who had one because big universities have controllers. Yeah. Big city governments have controllers. Russell Simmons had a controller. I remember walking into the office once and it was checks, checks stacked up everywhere. I was like, whoa, there's a vision for where I'm gonna be. So she's a controller. She was a controller for uh, Xerox. She's a CFO. She's a financial strategist. She's teaching the class. She could be making money doing them individually, but the truth is it's much more empowering to empower more people to be able to do their own financial statements and then go out and access this yeah. enterprise that's available to us. So yeah. they're asking, I'm just excited. They're asking where to go. You all can go to hisandhermoney.com forward slash wealth school. Again, that's hisandhermoney.com forward slash wealth school. Um, when I took a look at your stuff, I mean, you had things for like $20. I'm like, you can tell that you really want to just help and equip people with the knowledge and the information to be able to win at this. And so thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, you guys definitely take advantage of that. She is really. And the, the link is pinned in the description, in the description box. of this video. Again, it's his and her money dot com slash wealth school. So I have a question. Oh, you have, uh -huh. you have something you were going to say something. No, I was just going to say to people, it's important to get off the sidelines and get in the game. Because a lot of people follow me and I, you know, I have so many podcasts and stuff on YouTube, but you can't get a strategy from that. You can listen and catch an aha moment here and there, but you're not going to get a strategy. And what we need now more than ever is a strategy. See, the quarantine is a strategy. It's a strategy to prevent the massive explosive spread of this virus that I think people still don't really know all of what it is because there's too many things that are happening that are different one day from one day to the next. But that's a strategy. What's more important than quarantine or your life? Your life should be just as important. And so when you take classes and you take them in order, you start to build a strategy. And I honestly say that's the one thing we have never done. We've never had a real strategy. And so that's what the importance of taking the courses are. And they're very practical. Like, I mean, my book, Live and Check the Monday is laugh out loud funny, first of all. Do not read the book at a library or in church when you're supposed to be quiet. You will laugh out loud and people will look at you like you're strange. So don't do it. 
Um, they're all very practical and they're all things that you can actually do. Like it says, OK, do this. And you see the change happening in your life as you go along. So uh, but thank you for sharing um, the, yeah. the university. Yeah, I'm going to take advantage of that. Oh, my gosh, that's so good. So when we started um, our conversation, you said right now, basically when the world is in so many words in shambles, you're excited right now. Talk about that. Talk about the opportunities that you are seeing arise from this. What's going on? Well, well, first of all, I'm excited that everybody can sit there behind home and sit still. Yeah. We was running around like chickens with our head cut off, all of us, including me. Uh, this is back to the basics, sitting at home, uh, looking at the people in your house, talking to them, cooking dinner every day, like fast. I was getting crab legs at the boiling place all the time. <laughs> No, you you gonna eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Lynn Richardson. That's your lunch today, okay? Because that's all you got in the refrigerator. Because we didn't go grocery shopping because we're on a quarantine. We try not to go out every single day. So it's a uh, for me the excitement is getting back to normal. We were not normal. This was this was not normal. There was nothing about what has been presented in the information age over the past twelve years that is normal. So you got to remember. Think about this. Facebook and the iPhone did not exist prior to 2007. This is all new. Having Facebook and iPhone, all these different platforms and all this information moving, this is new. The human race is thousands of years old. And what worked before has kept us alive. So it's great to be able to have technology but you can't have too much stimulation. Um, there has to be some time to think. There has to be some time to strategize. There has to be some time to sit without having to move and go and feel like you can't catch up. So that's what I'm most excited about because this is the time to create. Um, I hate the cold weather now. Of course, I was born and raised in Chicago. I live in Los Angeles now. I'll never move to a cold climate ever again. It's too much work. But here's what I did say. When it was cold outside, I hibernated. I stayed in the house and then I created more businesses because what you gonna? I don't like going outside in the cold. So let me sit in the house and create something. So what I'm most excited about is that we're sitting still and we can create because everybody has one witty invention. My good friend and sister and soror, Dr. Vicki Johnson, said that everybody has one witty invention. What is yours? What did God put you here for? What is your purpose? What did your what do you do? Well, what do you do naturally? What are you passionate about? How is that going? How are you going to serve the world with that? And how is the world going to compensate you back? Some of the compensation is spiritual growth. Some of the compensation uh, might be emotional uh, peace. And some of it might be financial. Figure out what that is. So that's number one. That's the number one thing that we're sitting still. Number two is that when we're sitting still, things are going down. Everything that goes down must come up. So that means opportunity. And People ask, well, should I go buy stock? Should I do this? I can't tell you the answer to that. Anybody who tells you the answer to that is lying to you. You have to sit down and have a strategy, a one-on-one -on -one session to figure out what works for you because your goals, your family, your uh, you know retirement that you have or may not, all of those things, you have a DNA. Everybody has their own financial DNA. You have to figure out what yours is and devise a strategy to work for that. And then the, the other thing that I'm really excited about, which is, you know, it's unfortunate on one hand, but it's fortunate on the other, is that people are really going to start to have home based businesses. Because here's the thing everybody's not going back to work. I hope everybody understands that. Everybody's not going back to work. That's the truth. Because the world has figured out how to keep moving while you're at home. The world has figured out how to keep moving while people are sitting still. So everybody's not going back. Some people are going to be working at home permanently. Some people are going to be at home without work. And that should not be a permanent thing. So, you know, having a home based business. And then when you hire your kids, you bring your family into it. And, you know, it's just enterprise. It's understanding money, business discussions around it. So business is the engine of the fine of our financial life. Business is the engine of our financial life. So I'm excited about people having a home based business. It is essential. I don't care if you're bankrupt, uh, foreclosing, uh, bad credit, if the world is coming down, get a home-based business. 
That's the that's the key. That's the foundation to everything. Is what Robert Kiyosaki says. Um, it's what you know. It's what everybody who has amassed wealth understands that having a business is the way to have long sustainable wealth. Now, I personally uh, was not always business minded. Uh, my wife always has been, but there was a period where I was staunch, like. I'm going to have a job. I'm going to work hard. We can take risks on your end. You can try this, that, and the other, but I'm going to be the quote unquote stabilizing force. And I'm just going to go to work and make sure that everything is secure. I'll be the, the secure part of this equation. And, and that was just my mindset, right? I, I just didn't have an entrepreneurial mindset. Now, over time, obviously that has changed, but talk to the people listening right now who, who just heard what you said, right? Everybody must have a home-based business, but they're not at this current moment an entrepreneurial mindset having person. How do they take what you're saying, evaluate, okay, so I need a home-based business, but how do I figure out what type of home-based business should I go for? You know, there's good things out there, but there's also some not so good things out there. So for somebody who believes what you just said, but don't know where to start, what would you tell them? Well, one, I tell them to take the class, how to start a home-based business, because it's it's not going to be possible to get a whole answer from something like this. You, you know, like there are steps, because what happens is people will ask a question, but it's division. If you didn't take addition, subtraction, and then multiplication, let me tell you, you cannot divide. <laughs> I have a, I'm a mathematician. It's give me a long division problem with some decimals. It's like, now wait, okay, you move it over. Cause you have to use all of those skills to do the division problem. This is what your life is like. You have to start at the very basic. So the first thing I'd say is take the class. The next thing I'd say is if your goal is to provide security for yourself and your family, then you must diversify period. You must diversify and take anything that you have in the work that you do. So keep your job, keep your job, keep your corporate job, keep the regular paycheck. I agree with that. If you want to be a doctor, great, but you still need a home-based business. You want to be a teacher, great. You still need a home-based business. The other thing that people say is I'm too busy. Get unto busy. I just made up a word. Get unto busy. You get to pick your time. You the one decided that you're too busy. That that nobody's hearing that. Uh uh. Get un too busy, and find another stream of income. Why? Because no stream of income is guaranteed. I don't care what you do. Show me. It used to be get you a good government job. Mm -hmm. Last year when the government shut down, I was like, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Who who knew? We were so 2020 vision amplified, honey. We had 2020. We blind people could see. We was 2020. Everybody was 2020. We had 2020 sermons. I created Wealth Vision 2020 in 2008. So I was like, it's here. And here we are sitting down. We are sitting down. What? Who could have? I never imagined that I'd be quarantined. I never imagined that. So I run an entertainment firm. I manage millions of dollars. The whole industry shut down. There is no entertainment happening. All of the people who work in the company are sitting in one spot. Guess who's working? Home-based business. I'm the only one in the whole company. Okay. Now, they have other streams of income, thank God. But what about all those entertainers or whomever out there who are depending on MC Light have a whole bunch of concerts canceled. DJ gigs canceled. This uh, Don't know when they're going to start up again. All the people were going to a convention. My sorority, they said, oh, we're going to the convention. I was like, really? Canceled. 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 So the only way to hedge yourself against what you don't know, because see, people fail in life because they don't know what they don't know, and they think they know. It's one thing, the things that you know you don't know, right? You can, you, well, I know I don't know that. But what about the stuff you don't know that you don't know? Having a home-based business hedges you against what you don't know. So you can hire people, delegate. Maybe the husband does this, the wife does that. Maybe you set it up, but you got to have multiple streams of income. 
Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, you gotta have multiple streams of income. There's no way to get around it. Yeah, he's a believer now, right? Oh, you can't talk me out of it now. Yeah, he's a believer now. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. So talk about um, that moment or what was the dividing line? At one point, like you said, you were living, what did you say, check to Monday. Talk about when you started to make that shift to where you are now. What caused that to happen? So like does some some big something happen? I don't know, bankruptcy or what? I don't know really your story in full, but what caused that to happen? And then how did you stay on the up and up? So two things. The first thing that happened is when I was 25, before I was making a whole bunch of money, there's two things that happened to me. I was an assistant director at a community college. And one day uh, the vice president of student affairs tapped me on the shoulder. I actually thought I was getting fired because I didn't get along with the director. And um, and she and I had some choice words because she wanted me to ask her permission before I ordered some free information to um, improve my knowledge of my um, area that I was practicing in. I'm not going to ask you no permission for no free information. Are you kidding me? I told her that I said, when you hired me. You hire me to make decisions. And one decision that I'm going to make is to get myself some free information. <laughs> now, if it costs the department some money and I needed permission, I didn't have a budget, but I'm never going to ask you. So she was intimidated. So anyway, they asked me to run a campus. I had like four months to get it started. I said yes before I knew what all was involved. Uh, it was, They wanted it was March. It had to be open by August. I was like, oh, my God, they only wanted 50 students. I had 388 students. But I had a staff and a budget for 50. You looking at her. You looking at the whole staff and the whole budget. Uh, I did everything. It was massively successful. Then I was on all these committees. But I was making $25,000 a year. And my income was not going to go up. Not in the school system. It wasn't. So next to get a raise, to get a $5,000 raise, I had to go get a $20,000 master's degree. I was like, oh, no. So I prayed. I asked that I asked that God would lead me into a career where one I could come and go, where I could help people. That was number one, and I had a specific kind of help. I said I want to help people that will impact their lives in a major way. Two, I want to come and go as I please because I'm the kind of person I'll work all night, but don't I don't want to punch a clock and don't please don't mark me late because that's irritating to me because I'll work through my lunch, you know that type of thing. And and four. And the, the, the third thing is I wanted to be able to control my paycheck. So if I worked hard, I get paid well. So that was the first, that was a shift that sent me on a mission to understand that I would never be structured in a corporate position or any kind of fixed income situation. I knew that in my early twenties. So then I get fast forward, I'm making all this money and then I'm a fool. I'm losing it all. Honey, I'm the most educated fool you ever want to see. Okay. Whew, Jesus help me Lord. So thank you. I've been delivered and set free. Um, so finally, when I hit rock bottom, bankruptcy, um, I had no more money. Um, I was exposed because I was buying stuff for people and all of this and all the money was gone. I had to admit that I was broke and I was at the end, the bottom, like just at the bottom. And I decided that I would use my life to be a reflection of God. That's what and I, why I had that prayer. I guess I had nothing else to pray about because that was the end for me. And so um, at the bottom, when I had nothing, the recession of 2008, I had zero, zero. I didn't have any money. Um, I had quit my job to go pursue my passion of being entertainment and work for Russell Simmons and help people and this and the other. I had an opportunity. Then the economy crashed. I went through my 401k, everything. And it was when I had nothing that I found everything. I went and got my food stamps. Because all I needed was a roof over my head and food to feed my family. Everything else is what? Who cares? I, my house was in foreclosure, but I had a good attorney. So I wound up staying in it for like seven years. I went to, but I worked. I did the modification. That didn't work. I did this. That didn't work. So I used what I had in, the, in my lowest moment. And I found peace with zero. I found peace with zero. So when you find peace with zero, Nothing can change your Richter scale. There, nothing changes. I don't go up because there's more money. I'm I'm cool either way. Now I want more because I have more power. I could do more with it, but it doesn't matter. So the defining moment when I knew I was, I knew that my life was changed forever 
In 2008, I was preparing to go to the inauguration of Barack Obama. Flip over is 2009. The, the inauguration is in January. It was January of 2009 because he was elected in the fall of 2008. A winter of 2008, whatever month, season that was. And I was supposed to go to the inauguration. Not only was I supposed to go, I was supposed to be at events with Russell Simmons, other celebrities. But before the inauguration week, my pastor had preached New Year's Eve, Ephesians 5 and 15, which says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem me the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand the will of the Lord. So here I am the first of the year. Every time somebody do some, see then that you walk circumspectly, telling my kids. So we're coming to the inauguration. We didn't have, I didn't have enough money to go. So um, here I am with a dilemma. Wow. Do I use bill money to go? Because that's what I would have done in the past without thinking. I would have used whatever money. Let me tell you something. People were selling their children to slavery to go to that inauguration. That was the biggest event ever to go to Barack Obama's inauguration of first black president. So I was all prepared to go, but I really couldn't afford it. I asked my husband and uh, he typically, you know, he's like really quiet, but I asked him, I said, what do you think I should do? He looked up at me and he said, what does Ephesians 5 and 15 say? So I knew I had to stay home. I made the choice to stay home and tell the truth because the truth was I didn't have the money. And then I had to tell people why I wasn't going because it made it. If you knew me and knew who I had access to, it wouldn't make sense. Why wouldn't you be there? So I had to actually say I can't afford it, which was huge. So once I gave up that, what else is there? What, what else is there? So you tell the truth. Because you, if you live in a house you can't afford, that's a lie. You drive a car you can't afford, that's a lie. You buying your kids all this kind of stuff can't afford, it's a lie. You cannot grow on a lie. It's only going to take you so far. And it's going to lead you out there. It's going to dump you in the ocean. You, you can only grow with the truth. And the truth is, if all you got is two, you got to work with your two. So that was the defining moment for me. It was, it made me really grow up. I cried that day. I cried so hard because um, that was not who I had learned to be. But I knew I was becoming someone new, someone who was actually going to deal with her money responsibly. And that was my first time in my life ever making a decision that big and just dealing with the truth of it. So I paid my bills and I stayed home. Now, once I decided to stay home, now here's the thing about living in the truth. I was happy I didn't go because I don't like being cold. They were outside in the cold. I was watching on TV, warm, snuggled up with my boo, my chill. You know, I was happy. I was happy. So it's a it's a very I used to cry when I tell when I talk about this, because it was very it was very painful to let go of that persona of trying to act like you are something and you duly squat. You know, it was hard giving that up. It's the ego. It was very hard to give that up. So but once I did. Every other decision after that became very easy, which is why it's so easy for me to drive a 2005 Mercedes when I really want that Mercedes truck, honey. No, the Cadillac. It's Oh, I can see myself in it. But for what? For who? You, you're, talking, you're talking our language. Yeah. You are talking our language. I love it. So you yeah. drive like a purple car. I drive a 2005 And it's as like well. purple, like a purple blue, right? It's, uh, and it's he not gets, quite purple. Well, he gets it's out blue. of it. <laughs> he gets it's out purple. of it proud, like it's paid for it. I'm like, that's right. Like, paid get you a, a man that don't care about getting out of a purple car. That's right. It's, Although it's, you do tell me it's not purple. It's blurple. <laughs> it's blurple. I love it's it. It's mostly blue. It's paid for. It's paid for. Purple, paid for a car. It's paid, paid, paid for. for. Oh, we paid, paid, we paid, for. We paid cash for it when we bought it. Yep. Uh, 11 years ago. That's right. Let me tell you. So that car... Uh, I have and then my daughter my middle child her car we bought cash and then my um, oldest daughter her car she's had since 2012 I think she's had that car since all the cars are paid for Love it. and and but here's the thing so then when you live this life I, there are three things that I did in life so that I could actually teach my children through my actions one I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I decided to live 
right Amen. for real not the one where you love the lord but you still a fool you know i did that too i actually want to teach them with my actions two i lost weight because i could not teach them how to be healthy when i was 260 pounds I had weight loss surgery in 2007, lost 100 pounds, kept it off all this time. Wow. Three, um, I got my money straight so I could teach them. I couldn't teach them from what I was saying. I could only teach them through actions. So now that they're adults, they enter college with 700 credit scores. They've got money in the bank. They spend wisely. wisely. They're very frugal. And fr quite frankly, I told my oldest daughter last year, I was like, oh, you know what? You're working. You should buy a car. She was like, nope. Her free Toyota RAV4, the 2012, is just fine. And she's in her young 20s. So um, this is something that we can learn, yes. but you got to go to school. You got to go to school. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get it. Some of us get it. A few of us get it. But I learned the hard way. You don't have to learn the hard way. And if people are struggling, they are learning it the hard way. It doesn't have to stay hard. You can submit. And then you can go. So how to start a home based business and 21 days to financial freedom. If you know that you are struggling with money, you will live in check to check before the pandemic. Come on now. Uh, money was hard. You will get paid and it is gone and you stressed out. You you have anxiety. You're you're frustrated. You're depressed. You 21 days to financial freedom. And in the school, you can do the 21 Days to Financial Freedom and how to start a home-based business as a package and save $10. So there's a lot of stuff there for people um, to do. Love it. The link is right there on the screen. Y'all don't got no excuse. It's hermoney.com forward slash wealth school. If y'all have a question that you would like to ask Dr. Lynn, type it now. Uh, we'll try to get to just a couple of them. Um, but this is, this is huge because this what you're is. teaching us is this. That it's not just about making money. It's not just about managing your money, but also about getting your money back at the end. That's right. Spend less money, get more money, and whatever money, get it back. Jeff Bezos got a $160 billion tax refund. That's a strategy. That's a, that's a strategy. You got to get your money back. Yeah. So, you know, and I talk about it in how to start a home-based business, but the more money you make, the more the IRS will take. I'm just going to sit there right there. You got to figure out a way to get your money back. And the way to do it in this is society that we live in is through a home-based business. So um, I'm looking forward to people starting their home-based business. It's easier than people think. Um, you don't have to go anywhere, do anything. It's so, it's so simple. It's almost like, and I had been talking about this for so long, but then I realized people didn't know how. People didn't know how to start a home-based business. And then when this stimulus money, the business uh, the, through the CARES Act, when these tens of thousands and you know millions of dollars became available to businesses, including sole proprietors, entrepreneurs, independent contractors, freelancers, if you do hair, if you do eyelashes, like if you, you know, everybody is eligible, but then they didn't have any financial statements. Mm. What, a, what, a, what a terrible thing. So we're going to correct that for as many people as we can and hopefully you know, see some uh, businesses come out of this and grow. And, and more importantly, that one person will touch another person and teach somebody else. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Love it. Uh, somebody said this is a, a statement about uh, what you just mentioned. They said that your site says the Freedom Package starts April 4th. When is the next session? Uh, tomorrow, actually. Yeah, it actually starts tomorrow, Wednesday. Boom. So will it allow yeah, them so, to pay for it now? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, it actually starts on Wednesday. Okay. There there are home, there are sessions every week. So okay. thank you for sharing so that. I'll and make sure that be then. in the next session. Guys, the link is on the screen. Uh -huh. Hisandhermoney.com yep. slash wealth school. All her classes, all her books is at that link. And they yeah. are ridiculously affordable. So here's a question. Does the home-based business um, teaching cover all business types, such as like sole proprietorship, LLCs? Does it matter? It does teach the different types of home-based business structures that someone could possibly use. Absolutely, awesome. yes. So go to hisandhermoney.com forward slash wealth school. Yep, it does. It teaches that, which is very important because people important. don't know the difference. And then they add, well, what about my nonprofit? We ain't talking about that. Mm -hmm. We're talking about for-profit. And quite frankly, if you are now where you want to be financially, you don't need to deal with your nonprofit. Not right now. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do good. 
but make sure that your strategy is for your for-profit because eventually it could fund your non-profit because people think non-profit. Yes, that's wonderful. I, my charity that I co-founded with uh, MC Light and Dr. Felicia Shaw, we love it. We've given, presented a million dollars in scholarships over the past seven, eight years. I love that work. But right now that work is not happening. <laughs> Everybody's dealing with the for-profit so that the non-profit can continue to flourish once the for-profit is stabilized, you know, on a national level. So what were you telling people before this happened? You were telling people, you say like a year, year and a half ago, and I this is was, coming. So what were you telling I, them to do to prepare? I have been saying exactly what I've said here. I feel like a broken record. And literally because I do a radio show every day, about four, maybe about seven or eight weeks ago, right before we started to hear news that this thing was coming. I literally had a thought one morning before going live. Okay, Lynn, you talking about this too much. I can't not talk about it. It's the only way. I could talk to you about the stock market. Still got to talk to you about a home-based business. We could talk about your credit. Still got to talk to you about a home-based business. We could talk about your budget. Still got to talk about a home-based business. I don't care. Any of those things, fine. Still got to talk about a home-based business. Because it, whatever you fix over there, you're going to still owe a lot of taxes on it and you won't have another stream of income to hedge against the pandemic. Look at this. So, you know, right now we are in a in a very blessed position. Everybody, we're all so blessed right now. We are all so blessed right now that we actually have permission to sit down. If you are responsible, call your bill collectors, your creditors. There's a moratorium on foreclosures. There's a moratorium on evictions. There's a mor you, nothing can happen to you. You could not pay your bills. Now, that is not a license to be crazy. If you still have money, and if you, this is what I tell people. Even if you can pay your bills right now, call your creditors and get an extension because you don't know what's going to happen three, six, nine months from now. You don't know. Get the extension, put the money to the side as if you want to pay for it anyway, but hedge yourself against, we don't know what's going to happen. Unless you got a pot of gold uh, at the end of the rainbow or sugar daddy or sugar mama or winning lottery ticket, you should hedge yourself against you, what you don't know that's coming. So yes, I called all, I don't, I don't have a lot of creditors, I don't have a lot of debt, but I called uh, for the company at corporate housing. I called all the landlords, hey, pandemic. All the business has stopped and it has for the company. All the entertainers have stopped. What can you do? At the same time, we're strategizing. We're figuring other ways to do business. Uh, look what D nice did. He launched a whole digital club on the dog. on Instagram. trademark and everything. Do you understand? Um, we're figuring it out. But what you don't need to be worried about is how you're going to pay some bills and no money is coming in. Or how are you going to pay some bills that the government has said, listen, here's some allowances for you. Take advantage of it. If you get the stimulus check, save it. Put it to the side. Be frugal. I said the quarantine meal is um, peanut butter and jelly, bologna sandwich, uh, grilled cheese if you want to upgrade, or a bowl of cereal. That's the quarantine Meal, love it. Monday through Friday. Now you can get your <laughs> uh, ham Friday. and greens dinner on Sunday or something like that, but that's the quarantine meal. That's what we grew up on. <laughs> Come on now. Um, so you know, I have a variation of that because I don't eat bread, so I'll just grab a couple little pieces of lunch meat, roll it up with some cheese. I like ham and cheese, and that's that's lunch. <laughs> Who's about to be cooking 45 hours a day? I'm not doing that. I got a home-based business to run. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I got a home-based business to run. So, uh, you know, this is an exciting time. Yeah. This is, man, people with home-based businesses are blowing up. Yeah. Everybody who, tried, who figured out how to do their business virtually, mm -hmm. if you're an executive assistant, executive assistants are in need social media managers are in need there are so many things that you can do and digitize and uh but here's the deal you know i talk to people about um some of the things that we don't want to hear people say well okay is there another way well why don't we do the things that we know can help us one 
because we don't think we can succeed. succeed. But I tell anybody, you can't fail until you quit. Actually, Russell Simmons said that. If you can look up, you can get up. You just got to keep going. Successful people fail more often. That's what happens. Successful people aren't successful because they, they popped up and said, I have an idea and it was successful. No, it failed so many times. I've been doing this for 20 years. Now it's going viral. My book, Living Check to Monday, when it came out in 2005, I thought, oh, I'm going to save the world. The world was like, mm hmm But now it's a hit. So you have to keep at it. You have to keep going. So one, you don't think you're going to be successful. Two, you don't think you're smart enough, big enough, whatever it is. And the third reason that people don't do what they're supposed to do is just flat out laziness. Yeah. Check your own self. Are you lazy? You don't want to do the work? Guess what? You're going to have to eat that. You're going to have to lie in that bed that you're making if it's lazy. And let me tell you, I'm the laziest, hardworking person you'll ever want to meet. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> I don't. But then I get tired of being lazy. So then I got to do something to undo that. So, you know, I'm too lazy to stay lazy. How about that? Um, that's a real one. So I'll end up working anyway. So, um, you know, this is the time. This is the season. That's exciting. Yeah. Get into your passion and um, but go to class. Just go to class and don't. The other thing is we overthink things. We think we got all these degrees and all of that. Do you know black women are the most educated people on the planet? Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. We have more degrees than any other group of people. And do you know we the brokest? Yep. We are the brokest people on the planet with the most education. There is the correlation between education and, and financial wealth. Yeah. The more education you have, the broker you'll be. That's what I think. Yeah. So, and I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I uh, have my undergraduate degrees from Northwestern and Loyola. Doesn't get any better than that. A master's degree from Trinity uh, Evangelical Divinity School. Honorary PhD, because I said I wasn't working for nothing else. Y'all going to have to give me this one. But I had to work in the field, so I earned it that way. It was like, woo, I should have just went to school. I had to actually help people for real and, and be in the, in the trenches with them. Um, but the truth is, it's I had to toss away all that academic smarts. I always say to people, if you think you're smart, look at your circumstances. Because if you got dumb circumstances, <laughs> do the math. You think you're smart with dumb circumstances. Oh, Come on. man, that's classic. You're not smart right at all. That's, that's so good. All right. So, yeah, you're smart with dumb circumstances. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> All right, so tell He's going to be going around the house saying that now. Watch. Right. My circumstances are just dumb. <laughs> no, not your circumstances. Not me. I'm just saying people are going to be like, this yeah. is dumb. I need yeah, some smart circumstances. Some circumstances. You <laughs> smart didn't create that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell so everybody good. one more time about the 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 class on the... What what class? Because they're going to go to hisandhermoney.com slash wellschool. You got gonna, a lot of good ones You got ones a lot of there. stuff there it's available. Some good ones on. But you want us to hone in on... The first class is either how to start a home-based business or 21 days to financial freedom. But I really say the package because you it's $10 cheaper because you don't have to pay two separate shipping. Okay. With 21 days to financial freedom, the coaching is free. It's online. You, you back and forth with me. I actually fail people. Yes, I fail them. You didn't answer that question because people are going in and they're actually telling the truth to themselves. And it's things that I've been through. So it's great. But the transformation, like literally the transformation, people come to the 21 days financial freedom, overspending, doing all the stuff that we all have done or do or whatever and leave like, OK, I'm doing this. I got money in the bank. So you can do that and home based business at the same time. And it's on sale. That's the package. Yeah, they're together. Uh, yeah. uh, you get ten dollars if you do them separately. It's like sixty-one bucks. If you do them together, it's fifty-one. So that's wonderful. And it's called the um, Freedom Package. Twenty-one days. Yep, it's called the Freedom Package. And then I would say also enroll in Business Finance One Hundred and One, especially if you already have a business, because if you have applied or going to apply, and I'll send you all the link where they can apply for the government relief for businesses. Okay, please. When they call you, if you don't have any financial statements, you're going to be, you cannot call somebody and say, I need to get some financial statements. Yep. You can't, you're not going to have time for that. Because I'm telling you, I have a 24 hour hotline. I'll share that with you to share with them. Okay. The minute I see something go that's available, I'm, a, I'm sending my stuff. I'm applying. I'm sending it to my whole network. I'm not going to do it first and then tell y'all I'm going to be 
at the yeah. same time. I, I that's what I really passionately believe in. So um you you won't have time to go get financial statements. So once they call you or email you. Let's think about this guys. We are in an unprecedented time. You hear Dr. Lynn's not only passion so good. but wisdom, right? She clearly knows what she's talking about. She's put together she she said the equation is to not just make your money, not just manage your money, but to also get the money that you have to spend back. And she has spelled it out in a package called the Freedom Package. Mm-hmm. It's only forty five. It's on sale. Yeah. Ninety nine. Forty five. It's, it's crazy. This link right here. Yep. Y'all didn't have to pay for stay home. You. This has been three You're weeks. You're watching of all free. this advice for free right now. Get this. <laughs> and for just forty five dollars, she's saying she can show you how to fulfill the equation at that link right there <laughs> why would you not do it those who don't do it i mean ooh. don't come emailing us with your questions later because you didn't take her advice <laughs> yep. all right we don't we don't got that's to what I tell people too <laughs> you know when when people enter the family it's like family for real because if first of all if you're going to go to school you got to read yep. they will send dr lynn what's how do we get a book with this class girl please you think i'm about to answer that question right. You be, go back and read the description. Can you? Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. I'm not doing it. You have to read. We have to read. And I understand too. And then here's the other thing you can't run your life and your business from your phone. At some point, you got to open a computer. You need a journal. Look, this is this is my this is my um, uh, ledger of the money that comes into all the different businesses that I have. This is my journal that I write in. I write in this journal. This is all my little notes and things that I write. And then because everything I learned, I learned from Sandy Bakken, who used to work for the IRS. He used to be a, 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 a tax attorney at the IRS. He used to train all the agents on how to go out and get people. Basically, that's what he did. He left the IRS. I've been following him for 12 years. So when I tell you all to go to school, I'm in school too. When Sandy Bakken came out with his new uh, Midas program for taxes is $1,500. I signed it. First, first of all, I was too scared not to get it. How about that? Now, I had been I'd been following him for 12 years. My godmother told me I was looking for my other journal because that's my Sandy Bakken journal. It must be something. Love it. Oh, there it is over there. That's fine. But I've been following him for 12 years and the first time I heard you could hire your kids to work in your home-based business and I already had a home-based business but I didn't know anything. I was like, oh, wait a minute. They got me messed yeah. up. I got everything he had. I, and back then, uh, the whole thing was $500. I got the CDs. I listened to them everywhere. I learned the rules of the game, and I played the game by the rules. That's what everybody has to do. Learn the rules of the game, then play the game by the rules. Well, he had already left the IRS years before that. So it's got to be 20-something years. Everything he comes out with, I get I love because it. times are changing. Yeah. The tax code just changed. It got worse for employees, better for businesses. Yeah. Again, yeah. you know, so um, when you are ready to really change your life, you have to dig in. You you got to dig in. People who go to free school and that's your whole strategy, you're mm-hmm. on the sideline. But when you're really ready to change your life, you get in the classroom. Now you're in the game. You're in the game. You're learning step by step. There, You can't get anything fast in life. You think Michael Jordan became the greatest f- uh, basketball player ever fast? Nope. He had to keep practicing the same thing over and over again. He had to keep going to school. And a coach, Lakers weren't winning any championships until when, when uh, Phil Jackson, who led the Bulls to all those championships, when he got to the Lakers, that's when they started winning. That's when Kobe got his, his time to shine. During um, Kobe's memorial, when Michael Jackson was speaking with tears coming down his eyes, he was talking about how much Kobe used to get on his nerves, asking him all these questions, texting him at three in the morning. Kobe was asking him, "Okay, if I want to do so and so, what do I do? He was always in school. Always in school. Successful people are always learning. You know, I'm blessed. I'm privileged. I go to Jada and Will, uh, you know, Jada uh, uh, Pinkett Smith and Will Smith's house for, for Thanksgiving, things like that. They're always learning. I go because they're always learning. I'm around Russell Simmons. He's always learning. I'm around people who are always learning. You got to learn. It's no fast way. 
And even though I hear them say things, I then got to go get it for myself. Yeah. You gonna you gonna try to borrow somebody else's education and apply it to your life? You can't do it. Yeah, let me tell you what just happened to us recently. So we had to switch um, tax accountants because our previous one closed his doors due to some health issues and things like that. And so the new one, who we thought, man, we're going with him. We asked him the simple question: A, we want to hire our kids, put them on payroll. He responded back and said, "I'm not familiar with that." We were like, "Oh, he's not the one." You know what I mean? That's why it's so important that you know as well this information you know he was not i said what and he handled a lot of people's taxes and is not familiar with that and you discussed that in the freedom package absolutely i teach you more stuff than the tax person you have no i promise you that i promise you that you're gonna leave the class the freedom package you're gonna leave your, the, the 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 home-based business class part of that package with more knowledge than the average tax preparer so let me just be real clear about why I'm even here right now. First of all, I did not want to be a celebrity. That's why I'm still having a hard time with the word. Uh, my husband, just the other day, I was like, I'm a celebrity. He was like, yeah, babe. I was like, wow, this is crazy, right? Because I did want to, I don't know. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. It, it, it's, it's a whole lot. So I figured, let me just teach under the radar. But that's not, that's not the assignment. The assignment is to go in front of the people and tell them the information they don't have. And I have the information. Before I start talking about it, who who said it? Tell me a publicly well-known financial expert who talks about this. You ain't going to find one. They don't talk about this. They talk about everything else. Nobody's teaching this. So just casually on the Steve Harvey show, I said to the Caucasian couple, oh, when you have your child hire them to work in your home-based business, you can pay each child up to blah. They were like, oh. Oh my God, like millions of people just started emailing me and I was like, huh? So literally for a year and a half, I walked around telling that story until people started saying, I went to my tax preparer, they said that it's too risky. I went to my tax, and then I got mad. So for me, I'm from Chicago. Okay, so when we get, when I get angry, it's over. I got pissed. Because I felt like this is such a disservice to humankind. It's an IRS publication 15 on page 13, just as plain as day, black and white. So I teach in how to start a home based business. I teach various portions of the tax code so you know where to go for what. So then you learn the rules of the game and then you play the game by the rules. So then people say, well, why did my tax preparer teach me this? A, because they don't know. B, because it's not their job. Really, they can only, just like you said, you went in there and said, this is what we want to do. The tax preparer cannot tell you the 70,000 page tax code. They can't tell you. It's not possible. You have to get the education for yourself and then tell them which part of the tax code you want to use. And then it's their job minimally. But I'm going to tell you, he wasn't familiar with it. But more importantly, he was afraid. Yep. He was afraid to get to be in an audit. That's exactly what it was. He's afraid to be in an audit. Want to play it safe. Want who? I need a check for all the safe playing people who want to play it safe. Can you give me the exchange? Get, can you give me the safe money in exchange for playing it safe? No, I want my money back. Now, as long as you tell the truth, learn the rules of the game and play the game by the rules. That's it. Someone asked about your business finance 101. Does it teach about tax deductions and expense coverages? Or is there another teaching on that? Um, so they're looking at it. What does it say? They need to look at what that one says. The the Because if, if, they, if they picked it up, then they see what it teaches. Right? So this is, a, this is now Medea coming out. <laughs> right? Now, the Business Finance 101 teaches financial statements. I, I, and I'm not looking at it right now, but it specifically says it. Mm -hmm. So this yeah, is going to be like a curriculum. Yep, financial yes, statements. there you go. So this is what I want people to start to do. And you're going to do this. You got to take it for face value. What you see, it's like when you go to school, you see the curriculum. If the curriculum says you're going to learn music, don't ask if they're going to teach acting. It says music. You got to find another class for the other things. 
So the deductions and all of that stuff comes in how to start a home-based business, the beginning level. The financial statements that you're going to need for your business come in uh, the business finance 101. And then the uh, ongoing tax training comes in the home-based business mastery and tax education coaching because you can't learn 70,000 pages in a day. You cannot do it. So at that point, you got to make a decision. If you're going to invest in yourself, $49 a month until you get tired and then continue to get more training, more classes. And there's a portal and all that kind of stuff that you get access to. And it's a, let me tell you, I've been learning for 12 years. I'm never going to stop. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, but I took it seriously 12 years ago, 12, 14 years ago, because 20, 2006 is when I shifted everything. 2008 is when my eyes were open completely and 2009 is when I was tested. Yeah. So everybody's got to pass a test. Mm-hmm. What you do when you have more than enough money and what you do when you don't have enough money. So the shift came in 2006 when I was flat broke and embarrassed. Once the shift came, the knowledge came. And once the knowledge came, I was tested with the knowledge. Am I going to go to the inauguration even though I can't afford the money? That was a test. That was a math test. And I, I live to pass that test. I'm very, you know, it's uh, it's nostalgic, melancholy, but it makes me happy. I passed that test. Tough test to pass. Now, here's the thing. Later that year, uh, when Valicia Butterfield left Russell Simmons Company, she went to go work for the Obama administration. They asked me to take over. They didn't even post a job. They sent me the budget where, you know, for my division. And so I was asked to fill in the blank of my salary. And then when I filled in the blank and sent it in to Dr. Chavis, he called me and told me that wasn't enough. Wow. So because I passed that test, I believe I got to fill in the blank for my own salary and then fill it in again because it wasn't enough. And then in the 2013 inauguration, I ran a program. I was there, ran a whole program, did a whole hip hop uh, inaugural ball presentation. And yeah, I love it. So once you pass the test, then things begin to happen for you that you could not imagine for yourself. All right. Mm-hmm. So everybody go to the link right there. Exactly. And sign up for the freedom package. We're going to be in that other, too. Yeah. We, we, uh, we about to, uh, we're sign always up. learning. We always <laughs> students. What you just described is us. Yep. Okay. So let me tell you, get the it. People get the knowledge, get the on knowledge. this. Yeah. We got this yeah. one, straight up. We got mm-hmm. here in the seats we're sitting mm-hmm. in today because we have, been investing in knowledge non-stop for all 14 years of our marriage and we are not going to stop so if you are unwilling to invest in yourself uh, 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 Warren Buffett said the greatest investment that you can make is in yourself if you're not willing to get the knowledge and you're just looking for handouts Mm -hmm. you will remain in the position that you are in period one of my, what's my favorite quote? It's not your fault on how you were born. Yes, that's Bill Gates. He yeah. said, if you were born I rich, this. I mean, if you were born, born poor, poor, it's not your fault. But if, but if you, you die, die poor, it's, it's your fault. fault. Ooh, so that's two right? billionaires. Yep. Let me tell you, th- let me tell you something. So I go, I speak everywhere. People, I tell them, look, take the class. How much does it cost? I never answer the question because it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. It's free, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. It, it's not it's an investment. That's a different. Now, if you ask me, what is my investment? Because you want to make it. But the cost Because see, here's the thing. Nobody asks how much it's going to cost when you're going to kick it at the club with your girls, with the guys. Nobody. Nobody asks oh, how much that whole night's going to cost. Exactly. Go. Yep. Nobody asks how much the whole night's going to cost. Yep. Everybody just goes. And so. It's the things that we don't need that we don't care how much it costs. And then the things that we do need, we want to rip it apart. Uh, uh-uh, Not here. Not today. And I'm sure people have probably told you that you're not even charging enough for this. Because when we saw the prices, I'm like, if people don't jump on this, like it's going to be their fault. Well, this is the introductory rates. <laughs> so they will be going up. Yeah, Y'all we're building that. an okay. army. We're building an army. Okay. And the prices will be going up. But I'm I'm being um pandemic kind. And, uh, yep. You know. So I'm, this I'm, is a blessing I'm, right now I, for a lot yeah. of people to take advantage of this because she's like she said, it's free, pretty much. The website yeah. is still on the screen. It's so good. If you ain't went over there yet. Yep, we'll be there. Yeah. So and then yeah. 
So people say, then, then the, oh, I don't have $20. And then you know what I tell them? You lying. <laughs> you are lying. Now you ain't lying to me. You lying to everybody got $20. Yeah. A homeless person can get $20. Don't tell me you don't have $20 or $40. Please. please. And if you don't have $20, then you need a class to teach you how not to be in a situation where you don't have $20. That's it. I agree. But it's all the truth is, it's truth, it's love. Um, it's life changing. I don't think that there's anybody who can say they took the class in their lives. I'm not just talking about taking a class. I'm talking about your whole perspective on life changes. Yeah. And it happened to me the first time I went to this class that Sandy and Sandy Bakken, like I literally was blown away, blown away. Wow. So it's transformational. Wow. And then once you know, you can't go back. Once you know how to get your money back, you can't. It becomes impossible to leave it on the table once you know all the things that you can do. And then you understand how easy it is to set up a home based business. And you understand the difference between a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a corporation, an S Corp, all those things. And then you figure out which structure works for you. And I teach that as well. I tell people, which do this if you got that, do that if you do that. And then that demystifies that. But this last piece, I'm so nervous about it for people, all the people who are going to miss out on an opportunity because they don't have their financial statements. Yeah. PL, profit and loss. And you cannot get on your computer or pull out your crayons and your construction paper and manufacture a PL. That's not going to fly. Okay. So um, get the knowledge that you need. And um, I'm just excited to be available to you all Thank to you. share. Um, stay at home. You.com sound like the wave of the future. Yes. <laughs> We're about to be your best students. Dr. Yep. You're going to see us over here. We're going to pass the test. Okay. I love We've it. We've been doing the work. Yeah. So, God bless you all for yeah. your ministry. Thank you. My husband and I have been married 25 years. We work together awesome. as well. And um, it's just so beautiful to see you all doing this. And thank thank you for doing this for us. Thank, thank you. you for doing this for thank us. You. Thank you. Thank for, you for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us. If people want to keep up with you after the class is over, how do they find you on the interwebs? Tell them about your social media and everything. Just at Lynn Richardson. Go to Instagram, Facebook, at Lynn Richardson. I'm there. And I'm there every day, all the time, doing something new. I love all it. Right. Thank you. We can't thank say thank you, you enough, thank Dr. You. Lynn. This you was blessed incredible. us. You all who are coming in, share this before you exit out. Um, we want others to get this information. Get free. Get free. That's nope. what we want. Let's go. All right, y'all. Until next time. Amen. Peace. Bye, Thank you.